today I'm going for my first run in the New Balance Beacon 2. Ten point five miles, seven minutes, thirty-eight seconds per mile today. Getting in some quicker miles along the lakefront in Chicago, having just an absolutely wonderful time in the New Balance Beacon Two. This is a shoe that I really enjoyed running in the first version that came out last year. I thought it was a sleeper hit, one of my favorite shoes of 2018, and I was eagerly awaiting the 2019 release. Although I had some concerns at first when I initially saw photos of the Beacon Two because I don't really understand what all this is. And the story for this year is that the midsole is largely unchanged for the Beacon in the second iteration, but all the changes it seems to be are in the upper. The midsole has that lovely ground contact fresh foam. Now within New Balance, there's many kinds of fresh foam that exist out there. Not all fresh foam shoes are created equal. My favorite of the fresh foam iterations is this ground contact version, which I think is just uh, a miraculous implementation of EVA foam. I don't know if it's this honeycomb design pattern, which allows for somewhat of like a, a differential response pattern in terms of how the foam performs. But this is a foam that in the last year's Beacon 1 and in this year's Beacon 2, I thought could handle a variety of paces, a variety of effort levels, a variety of distances run, all with a really fantastic capability. On the outsole, there's only a very minimal few little tiny patches of rubber, which is something that is very exciting for me to see. You're definitely gonna cut weight a little bit on there. And I think it's the combination of this fresh foam uh, EVA, which is very light, and this minimalistic rubber that leaves this shoe feeling extremely light. It's much lighter in hand than it would look. The lightness continues into the upper, and the upper is where all the changes are. I think it's a little bit thinner in terms of the thickness of the material from last year. I feel like it's a little bit more breathable, although last year's I didn't think had, had any sort of breathability problem. So this year I think it's a little bit thinner, a little bit more room for your foot to move around in terms of how stretchy the upper material is. Uh, the major changes though uh, are in this heel cup, which I think is uh, a very weird design. Uh, I like I see what they're doing. They've got kind of like this honeycomb pattern going on in the foam, and they wanted that to extend up in a geometric pattern all along uh, the heel cup here and on the collar. And then they did kind of the flare away, which is very popular in a lot of other shoes that you see out there on the market. And my first concerns were that this was gonna be a big piece of plastic when I saw the photos. Um, or that there was gonna be a lot of rigid parts in here. Uh, that's not the case, it's all pretty flexible, it all bends. Uh, there is some structure along the base of the heel cup, uh, so that does uh, its job well, so it's not completely floppy. But overall, the feeling that I got from this was that the back of the heel was very loose, it didn't affect how I ran. I didn't feel like my foot was gonna fall out of the shoe and I didn't feel like my foot was slipping out of the shoe at all. Uh, but it did feel looser than most other shoes that have kind of this type of design, which can lead to a little bit of looseness in the back here. So if that's something that bothers you or if you have an issue with your heel slipping out of the back of a shoe, that's something that you definitely wanna consider and you may wanna to go to using some of these extra eyelets 
when you're lacing up these shoes. Uh, but overall, this tended to stay out of my way and it wasn't a big problem. There's a little bit of padding right along the part here that will touch the sides of your ankle. Uh, and that part was pretty comfortable, uh, but I did wish that I felt a little bit more lockdown in the back of the shoe around here. Uh, the other fortunate thing about this is that it's not heavy at all. It does seem to be relatively light and I'm not sure if it's too early to kind of mention it, but something that has been an issue with, I think pretty much every New Balance shoe that I've run in, uh, was that the insoles will slide out. I haven't had that insole slipping issue yet. Uh, usually the solution is pretty sim simple. Get some spray adhesive, uh, put it on the bottom of that insole and just glue that down. Um, I haven't had to do that yet. Uh, 10 and a half miles usually takes a little bit longer than that for that issue to rear its ugly head. Uh, but I did get the shoe uh, pretty wet today. I did put it through a little bit of a beating. And so uh, the fact that it's not an issue yet gives me hope that maybe it won't be an issue. I'll follow up uh, later on if that does happen to be the case. So those are my thoughts on the Beacon 2. A slight iteration on the Beacon 1. Most of the changes are largely aesthetic. And fortunately, those aesthetic changes that I don't particularly like aren't interfering in the performance of the shoe. So I'm definitely gonna look forward to putting it in a ton of miles at a variety of speeds and distances in the shoe. And I'm going to have a great time in it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this shoe. Uh, I'd love to talk to you guys about it down there. But before I go, I wanna remind you guys about the Cherry Runner for this week. And he's gonna be raising $100,000 ahead of the Chicago Marathon for World Vision and Clean Water Projects. Uh, it's an amazing and ambitious goal. I've already donated $70 to help him along on his fundraising efforts, and I'll post links in the description in case you'd like to learn more. And that's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?